I'm Owen Bigline. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Wanted to do a blog on a uh, talking about a recent interview I did with a major U.S. publication based out of New York, Manhattan. And uh, I thought it would make a good blog here because uh, this was a, a and I'll uh, tweet the link to this article when it comes out later this summer. Um, but uh, it's a prominent New York based publication. Uh, this guy contacted me about six weeks ago and said, I've been watching your YouTube uh, channel for quite a while. I'm enjoying it, learning a lot. I'm getting ready to do an article on Vancouver real estate. He had done several articles in the past uh, on Vancouver real estate and was getting ready to put another one together. Had been watching my blog. He'd been to Vancouver several times over the last few years, knew the city well. Um, and you know they've got a similar situation that's been going on a lot longer than us in Manhattan. The price of homes, the, the price to live in a city like Manhattan, wages aren't keeping pace, it's really only for the rich uh, to live in Manhattan. Uh, he also asked me about my book and asked if I could send him a copy of the book. Uh, he'd like to read it and then we'll follow it up with a Skype interview. And I said, absolutely. Coming from this guy, I sent the book to him the next day and he read it. So I thought I would do a blog here. We covered a lot of topics here. This guy is a is a very smart guy, well educated, uh, good writer with, as I say, a prominent publication. Uh, he did his homework as well. He read my book, but he already knew a lot about Vancouver real estate and the, and what's been going on here uh, the last decade. Uh, the prices, the wages, that uh, and the the foreign buyers and everything else. So it was good, a breath of fresh air to talk to someone like this who really knew his stuff and had done his homework. Now, just on a side note here, um, I've talked about this before over the years, how I do not do a lot of media in Vancouver, and there's a reason for it. A, I found over the years they would be contacting me, TV, CBC, all over the place, radio, newspapers. It was always the same thing. They wanted to put some sort of negative spin, have me comment on something like shadow flipping or comment on speculation or pre-sale flipping. Uh, those were the kind of things they were contacting me about and I would say, listen, I don't I know that stuff is going on, but there's nothing I can add to the conversation. Now, if you guys want to call me and, and uh, talk about the benefits of buying and owning your principal residence for the long term or buying an investment unit and keeping it for 20 or 30 years, you give me a call. Uh, and But you see, the newspapers here in Vancouver, for the most part, aren't interested in those type of stories. They need to sell newspapers. Most of them are hurting right now. Uh, subscriptions are down. Radio is almost becoming obsolete. We need to grab them with some headlights at the headlines that the Vancouver market is crashing. And so they've kind of slowed in their pace. I had one six weeks ago. I was on vacation in California. They emailed me about uh, a, a, a listing in uh, the west side of Vancouver that had been bought and sold six times in the last three years at a profit and wanted me to comment on it. I ignored, ignored it, of course. I don't know anything about this house. I didn't sell it. Uh, but those are the kind of things they fish for. And uh, a couple of these media outlets, I've told them long ago that, listen, I'm not interested in being a media liaison for you guys, <laughs> especially an unpaid media liaison. If you want to send me a check for $2,000, maybe I'll think about going down to your studio. But I've got other things to do. I'm busy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realtor. And I don't, as I say, I don't, I don't want to become a media liaison. Uh, and there's nothing I can add to your conversation here, unless you want to talk about the benefits of owning real estate, then I might consider it. And you know, just on one final note here, and I'm going to meander a bit on this blog and I apologize because I've got a lot of things I want to talk about here. But you know, I'm the first one, if you've watched my blogs here for the last six or seven years, I think I keep a pretty balanced approach to what I talk about on here, uh, even though some people don't think I do but they should go back into my archives. Uh, you know, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I have no biases towards real estate, by whether the market's up or market's down. I just give you the straight goods here. Now, business goes on for me, and I've been in this business, unlike a lot of uh, commentators, uh, for over 30 years. So I've been through ups and I've been through down cycles. They're natural. But what I tell people is that if you buy a 
principal residents today live in it, enjoy it, pay down the mortgage, look back on it in 20 or 25 years, it's gonna be the best decision you ever made. Same thing if you bought a Yale Town condo today as an investor, put a tenant in it, kept it tenanted for the next 25 years, then look back on it, again, you're gonna do fantastic. But I have no idea what the market's gonna do in the short term. You could buy that Yale Town condo today for 650, next year at this time it's worth 600. But who cares? If you're one of my clients as an investor, you're not buying it to sell it for a year from now. This is something we'll look at 15, 20, 25 years down the road. But people continue to wanna to know what the short-term market's gonna do in the short term. Is it overheated? Is it gonna, is it gonna, is it in a bubble? You know, there's, I, as I say, painted both sides of the picture here. Real estate market in Vancouver is not perfect. I blog many times about every day on the MLS, <laughs> even today, I see homes, units, condos sold at prices that I'm thinking, what the hell were they doing? I mean, <laughs> terrible locations, bad stratas. I know these buildings and they've got issues coming up, so they didn't read the strata docs. Uh, overpaid for it. it. Those are out there all the time, and it's why I've advocated don't just buy anything. Buy the right unit at the right price and keep it, whether it's your principal residence or an investment. You know, over the years I've blogged about pre overpriced pre-sales and how the market for pre-sales, the window opens and closes. It's been closed for the last few years, in my opinion. One of these days it will open again where the developer is gonna give you an incentive to take a shot on buying a pre-sale and not moving into it for three years. Uh, but for right now, the incentive hasn't been there for a long time and most of the developments, unless they're very high-end luxury stuff at 1,500 or 2,000 a square foot, are in bad locations. You're getting dog locations on these, location, on these buildings right now. I've blogged about, uh, you know, uh, uh, I've blogged about two years ago, uh, a year and a half ago, a brand new development in Mount Pleasant uh, selling at $1,100 a square foot that didn't even have a proper in-suite laundry. They didn't vent, which <laughs> is okay on a 30-year-old building, but unacceptable on a, new, on a new one. So I've done many blogs over the years about the good, the bad, and the ugly in Vancouver real estate. And that's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of local media anymore, because they're trying to spin a, 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 a image there, and it's, for the most part, negative. So let's go back to my New York guy here. Spent about an hour with him on Skype. We covered a lot of topics. So let me just kind of meander here, just go through some of the things we talked about with him. So we talked about, of course, all the uh, 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 new taxes, restrictions, mortgage tightening, everything they're doing to try and cool this Vancouver market. Now, it's definitely worked with the detached market. Uh, that started two years ago with the foreign buyers tax and the detached market, if you watch some of my blogs last month, is still trending lower for sure. Uh, maybe we're starting to see early signs of it finally in the condo market. And I'll do more blogs on this later uh, after the summer because I don't like to, to uh, again, I don't have a crystal ball, but we are in the dog days of summer here. But what I'm seeing from my listings now is far fewer offers on my listings. So back three months ago, if I had a good one bedroom, I was getting 10 offers on it, maybe seven offers. Multiple offers selling way over asking. Now on my last few sales, I've had uh, two, three offers, uh, not as much over asking. I've had a couple of sales recently, both on the buying and selling side uh, that have sold below, just below asking price, not a lot. But uh, so there are early signs here that the market for condos is still starting to balance out a little bit. Still favors the seller though, on the most part, at least for the one, one and dens, lower price two bedrooms. As you get up the luxury scale, it's more balanced for sure. So we talked about all the restrictions that have been in place, especially the mortgage tightening. Uh, you know, is, are these measures gonna work? And I said, hey, there's early signs of it. Uh, you know, the main one, of course, is the mortgage tightening. We've gone through so many of those. Um, you know, you've now gotta qualify at the posted rate plus 2%, which is crazy. Tough to qualify for a mortgage. It's always been difficult to qualify for a mortgage here. Um, you know, the new uh, um, uh, empty homes tax, we talked about that. So I said, you know, there's early signs that maybe it's gonna have an effect. But this reporter said some interesting things to me. He's a smart guy. 
uh, he said to me, well, Owen, you know, with all the, the you, you, you've done several blogs in the past year that I just watched on the demand for Vancouver condos is going to continue to be increase. The desirability to live in a city like Vancouver is never going to dissipate. If you've got the money, just like New York or London or Southern California, if you've got the money and you can afford to live in a city like Vancouver, this is where you're going to want to live. And that is only going to get stronger. Now, some people, of course, are going to be priced out. But of course, there's always minting people that have money, people that are retiring from back east, people from the United States that are buying second and third homes and want a piece of Vancouver. The Chinese foreign buyers, they've slowed on the detached market for now. But mark my words. If the prices get down to a certain level, uh, they will be back. You know, I can tell you that the foreign buyers tax is not being triggered by any very many foreign buyers. It hasn't since it came in two years ago. The only reason people, foreigners, were buying these units prior to these homes were because the market was on a tear. It was going up month over month. Most of them, almost all of them, were in the process of getting their permanent residency status or their Canadian passport. So. They were going to become citizens anyways. Let's buy now because the prices are going up. All that's happening now, I told this guy, is they're just now waiting. They're on the sidelines. Prices are going down. But they're going to wait for sure until they get their PR status or their passport. And then once they have that, they'll wait for the right buying opportunity. They'll be back and they don't have to trigger a foreign buyer's tax. But he said something and he said, oh, and Demand seems to be high. I've been to Vancouver. It's an incredible city. I agree. Anyone that has the money and the funds and can afford to live in downtown Vancouver or the surrounding areas is going to want to do it, just like Manhattan. Isn't all these things kind of like trying to hold a balloon underwater? And eventually people will get their way around these or the, they'll get less restrictions on the mortgages. Uh, sentiment will change with the government because there's a lot of uncertainty with this NDP government. Just like 20 years ago, we went from the number one province to dead last in about two years with the NDP. And I see it every day in my business. People are, are, are cautious with this government. What are they going to do next? They're not instilling a lot of confidence. And uh, I worry a little bit that if they stay in power very long, they're probably going to put us in a recession just like they did the last time they were in power. But we'll see. I don't want to get political here. But when he said that, bells went off for me. He understands that, yes, he's absolutely right. Demand is only going to increase. These measures are generally short term in, in length. Eventually, the NDP government will be out of power. Eventually, maybe they'll turn the spigots back on for qualifying for a mortgage. Uh, you know, eventually the uncertainty around the economy and the pipelines, and it's been a kind of a, of a perfect storm that's been going on here the last six months. So he's right. So people should really look at any short term uh, volatility or price corrections here moving forward over the next year or two, whether the prices come down 10% or 15 or 20 on condos, which we're due for. Remember, 20% correction will take us back to where we were last summer. So hardly a big, big uh, price drop here. Basically, it'll shave one year's worth of appreciation off. But you should look at those things, depending on your time horizon, your budget, as buying opportunities. These things will pass, as they say. But a lot of people now are going to interject, well, and this market was driven by foreign buyers and by cheap interest rates. And you're right. Interest rates are going up. Uh, so as we get more of these quarter point in interest rate hikes, that's like a cold bucket of water on the market. Uh, for every quarter point interest rate hike on a million dollar property, it's probably shaving twenty or thirty thousand dollars off the price. But keep in mind, if you're a market timer, uh, you know the market is probably going to go down here because of interest rate hikes and more tightening. So you kind of pay for it one way, one way or the other anyway. Sure, you might get that condo at fifty thousand dollars less than it was last year but you're gonna make up for it with the higher interest rates over time. But he hit the nail on the head. These things come and go. The foreign buyers will be back. Sorry, they're not foreign buyers. The Chinese buyers will be back. Uh, they're not gonna trigger the foreign buyers tax. They're just gonna simply wait till they have their PR status. But demand from the rest of the country, from people from California that are buying second and third homes, even if they have to trigger 
the empty homes tax. It's just the cost of doing business and owning in a city like Vancouver. So that demand, I can't stress it more, especially as we start to build a tech hub up here in the Northwest between Seattle and Portland and Vancouver. Um, the demand for living in downtown Vancouver is not going to go away. It'll go in waves depending on the government and the taxes and the restrictions and just the overall market sentiment because we're due for a correction here. My God, I've been talking about it for years. But that demand is, is only going to grow and it gets better every year. Just walk around downtown Vancouver. It's night and day from what this city was five years ago and it doesn't even look like the same city fifth from back in 15 years ago. And as the city grows, it becomes more desirable, especially with what I've talked about with young tech workers, Amazon, SAP, Microsoft, all these companies. The reason they want to locate to downtown Vancouver, it's part of the incentive to get these young tech workers here. They don't want to be in Boise, Idaho. So he was absolutely right. He hit the nail on the head there. We talked about market timing, you know, and my philosophy on market timing. I gave him, he mentioned my golden rule that I've been putting out here for eight years on my blog here. My golden rule to real estate. If you want to live in Vancouver and you just moved here, let's say from Toronto, and you're not sure if you like Vancouver, if you can afford to live here very long, uh, if the what the job situation is going to be like, if you're uncertain, then rent. And you're not going to buy until you have at least an eight to 10 year holding period. That's the magic number. You could buy from today, two, three years from now, it could be worth less than what you paid for it. Six years, it could be worth less than what you paid for it. So unless you have an eight to 10 year holding period, then just rent. Not the best way to go because you're going to be paying $2,300 a month for a one bedroom. I just had a guy that finally bought who was paying $5,000 a month in Cole Harbor for a two bedroom in debt. Nuts. Rent until you can commit to eight to 10 years or have a backup plan. So if you buy and you get a job transfer to Toronto in three years and you call me up and say, oh, and I'm moving to Toronto. If the market is down, it's a buyer's market. Prices are off 50K from what you paid for it. Then your plan B is to put a tenant in it, go move to Toronto and rent or buy out there. And when the market recovers here, which might take a year, two years, three years, four years, I don't know. But keep in mind, the market will recover. It always does. That's all you have to know. Three years later, I'll call the guy up in Toronto and say, hey, a unit next door to yours just sold for a hundred grand more than what you paid for it. It's, if you want, now would be the time to sell, make a bit of money and, uh, and, and uh, stay in Toronto. I had a guy, a little side story here, sold him a condo downtown here five years ago. Uh, uh, yeah, moved to Calgary. Uh, this sorry, this was in twenty late uh, yeah, about five years ago, late twenty twelve, early twenty thirteen. The last downfall we had. Wanted to move to Calgary and take a job. The market was soft. We had about a six month slowdown there. Uh, if he were to sell, uh, it would have been about a wash uh, after commissions and everything else. Actually, he might have lost a little bit of money. He moved to Calgary anyways. Rented the condo out. We spoke many times over the years. I guess about three years ago, he called me up and he at this time was above water for sure. He probably would have made 75K if he sold this one bedroom. He decided at that time, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm okay, I'm comfortably financially here. I've got a good, in Calgary, I've got a good tenant in my place in Vancouver. I'm getting a good rent. You know what? I think I'm just gonna hang on to it. Uh, because, you know, eventually I'm probably going to want to move back to Vancouver in another 10 years and maybe move back into this unit. Well, I don't have to tell you what happened. You know, three years ago, this unit was worth 500, 520. Uh, now his unit is worth about 750. So it comes back to what I've always preached here. Buy it, hold it, keep it, and you're going to do fantastic. So, but timing markets, the golden rule, if you can't keep it, have a backup plan. Eight to 10 years. And that is the magic there. Just buy it, hold it, and, uh, and you will do fine. If you wanna time markets and you think that there's gonna be a better window to buy that condo next year, then by all means, wait. 
I don't care if you buy today, you don't have to. If you want to think you're going to get a better window next year, then just hold on. Keep paying your $2,500 a month rent and wait for a better buying opportunity. Now, your interest rate that you're going to lock in will probably be higher at that time. But hey, you might save 50 k off the purchase price. You'll probably make it up though in, in, the, in the financing charges. But most people cannot time a market properly. And that was kind of the last thing we talked about with him. He had read my book about the, the perils of market timing. Uh, some people, most people get it, I think. Most people that own homes or have lived in Vancouver for a while know that they've been calling for a correction here for the last 20 years. We tend to get these 5, 10, 15% corrections every five years. Last one we had was in 2012, early 2013. Uh, but we might get a more severe one, 20 or 25%, which would take us back to prices a little over a year ago. But if you want to time it and try and get a better window, go ahead. But we have talked about setting a strike price. If it goes down 10% or then you're going to buy, if it goes down 15% or you're going to buy, most people cannot pull the trigger when the market is finally, when that correction finally comes. I've seen it firsthand and I blogged about it. It's hilarious. These guys come to my open houses and, I, and the market's starting to trend lower. It's never the right time to buy. It gets down to 15%. Uh, he's telling his friends, hey, you know, that Gale Town condo I was looking at a year ago was 35K less. Maybe I'll buy now. His friends are telling him, are you crazy? Don't you know what's going on? Why would you buy that condo now? Look, read the newspapers. This is the big one. This market's going to go down 50% or more. It's in a bubble. They never pull the trigger. Buying in a, in a down market is very difficult to do. Very few can do it. Go back to late 2012, and I always go back to this video, the video that launched my career, really, as far as my YouTube career. I did a blog in, in, uh, at the end of 2012, which was a strong buyer's market. The, I did a blog saying that the only buyers I had in 2012 were experienced real estate people, people that had owned real estate for a long period of time. Savvy investors were snapping up, finally starting to buy units in late 2012 at 10 or 15% off where they were. And I had several big blogs from Toronto and here that picked up this, that here's Owen Bigland saying people should be buying when, don't you know, this is the big crash. It's down 10%. I put my money where my mouth is and it's still on my video blog. I listed 20 properties in Vancouver and in Richmond that either I had sold or bought, represented the buyer, or just some good properties that I had seen and thought, this is a good house at a good price. The guy who bought this house is going to do very well. I could have listed 200 on there. Now I had no idea how good it would have turned out, I have to admit. Uh, that market, three months after I posted that, took off and never looked back and hasn't looked back since. So, you know, there was condos on there that have more than doubled. There's detached homes on there sitting on seven, 8,000 square foot lots you could have bought for 1.2 million back in 2012. Those are, those are sitting at 2.5 now and selling. So, but I took a lot of heat, but I also po pointed out to people that those were the ones that were able to buy and I said in that blog, they bought and couldn't care less if they bought that unit down 10% and it went down another 10. What did they care? They were either they're gonna live in it as a principal residence or they were putting a tenant in it and we'll reevaluate it in 20 years and see where we're at. So we talked about that as well. So those were some of the things I've been dragging on here about what we talked about. Um, made me feel pretty good. This guy enjoyed my book. Uh, got a lot out of it. As a matter of fact, he passed it on to his, uh, his son who's going to university uh, and he tells me he's going to buy two or three copies from Amazon and give them away for Christmas gifts and that's made me feel pretty good. Uh, my book is about, especially for young people, the, the, the advantage of buying your principal residence sooner rather than later, taking advantage of the principal resident exemption, which is the only tax to tax shelter we get. People don't even understand it most of the time. I don't think people that are complaining about real estate, do you even know what the principal resident exemption can do to you and it's unlimited? Created more millionaires in this country than all other sources combined and it will continue to create more millionaires. <laughs> the great thing is it's tangible. It's not like owning a stock. You got a roof over your head. 
The alternative, remember, to owning your principal residence is to rent and pay $2,000 a month for a, for a studio or pay $5,000 a month for a two and den in Cole Harbor, which the unit was okay, but nothing special. That's what $5,000 a month is getting you now. So it's about getting your principal residence sooner rather than later and down the road if you can, and you wanna take the next step, buy an investment property, put a tenant in there, keep it. Start buying some good dividend paying and companies that have increased their dividends unabated for 20 or 30 years, what we call dividend aristocrats. It's all in my book. It's about creating passive income. There's only so many hours in the day you can work and you're never gonna achieve much in the way of financial security down the road unless you have your money working for you. You're not gonna do it. The government taxes us too bad on our working income. You need to get it working passively on top of your working paycheck. On a final note, I wanted to thank a blog here in Vancouver has rated my blog number four on YouTube as the most popular Vancouver-based YouTube channels. And hey, I was in some pretty good company there. Uh, Vancouver Canucks, uh, Vancouver Board of Trade and Tourism, uh, City of Vancouver was on there, and my real estate blog, it was number four on the list of the top 15. So thank you to everyone who sub subscribed to my YouTube channel. I know everyone doesn't agree with everything I have to say, and that's fine. That's why I do it. It's what makes the world great. Everyone's got their different opinions, but I think most people are picking up what I'm putting down here. Real estate in Vancouver is not perfect. It's not. There's some ugly stuff I see every day. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Vancouver real estate, buying your principal residence, whether that's in Vancouver or Richmond or Burnaby or Coquitlam, will do fantastic things for you and certainly beat being a long-term renter. But there are things out there, the market gets overheated. I'm the first one to tell you that, hey, we're due for a bit of a correction here in the condo market and maybe we'll get it later this fall. When we do, I'll be the first one to report it. I'll tell you exactly what's happening, just like I did with the last correction we had. I'm Old Big Len. As always, I'll see you next time.